Ah, cutie mark crusaders, how you've grown. From reconciling with sisters to questions about bullying to addressing physical limitations, they've covered a wide spectrum. So why are they saying that all they ever do is look for cutie marks? Kinda weird. That's rarely been the main focus of their episodes, usually just a joke. Which is why I'm glad they got their marks last season. Put that gimmick to bed and let them grow up. And son of a gun, this episode did a nice job of letting them grow. In fact, it did a better job than Crusaders of the Lost Mark in several respects. I'll talk about their new marks when I review the episode in a proper after the fact, but my biggest criticism is that a cutie mark based on a group implies that individual is defined by the group. I don't view that as healthy, even if their marks have individual elements. But look at this! After some failed shenanigans, they decide to go off and try stuff as individuals. And while much of the episode's focus is on Apple Bloom, we get to see Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo both enjoying themselves and bringing those talents to bear near the end. That's a far cry better than just a song for Pipsqueak's campaign. Apple Bloom remains the group doomsayer, second only to Twilight in her freakouts, but she does an admirable job in trying new things and conveying the discomfort with growth. Though all she needed was a typewriter and a sheet saying, All marks and no play makes Apple Bloom a dull filly, to go full scary. There are a lot of great messages to this. Much like Scaremaster, the foals learn the value of time apart from the group. It helps one grow, learn their own skills, and come back to enhance the party. Then there's the message to not allow self-pity to blind oneself to the rest of the world, and how friends can help us overcome our fears. All these messages we've seen in past episodes, yet the new story offers a fresh presentation. Setting aside our main protagonists, I love the return to the town spirit. We haven't seen that in a while. Part of Ponyville's charm as a setting is seeing the background ponies doing their own thing without being assaulted, tormented, or confused by the main six. Apple Bloom gave us the chance to see Ponyville's residents as just being themselves. Both Biceps continues to be a source of physical humor, even though he's dumb as a post. And I still find Pound and Pumpkin to be more adorable than Flurry Heart. Just saying. And of course, there's our newest cult, Tender Taps, who is taught by the worst teacher. Amir who thinks that a new student who has no training should perform at a recital that evening. Genius. Nah, I kid. Tender Taps was a fun character to introduce into the mix, and I'm glad he could serve as an example of the Crusaders' next stage. It'll be fun to see them grow as individuals and reach out as a group when needed. That's a much healthier balance in my view. And shall I comment on the idea of... Apple Tap? Tender Bloom? Whatever you want to call this ship, I knew the minute they started talking that folks would treat them as a couple. Because fandoms operate on a simple premise. If a boy and a girl work together, look at each other, or breathe the same air, it must be love. I guess it depends on how much you want to see in the show versus what the fans express creatively. I'm more a fan of the latter. And while I would love to see some development for the romance between married couples like Cadence and Shining Armor, I don't need big-scale romance for our main characters. Nor do I need to see ponies displaying their posteriors to friends and passers-by. The cutie mark line of decency has been crossed. Have you no shame? I'm Silver Quilted. Thanks for watching.